YouTubers, subscribers, and friends, welcome to my channel. It is a beautiful day out right now. It is 60, 70 degrees. We are forecasted to having a very hot day today, up into the uh, mid to high 80s, they said. I'm just kind of like freelancing it today because. Uh, even though I don't deer hunt anymore, I still like to keep up on my technical tricks. I know that you watch these videos on a daily basis, see me hiking in the desert, talking about stuff in the desert. But maybe you may not know that I have a lot of experience in the desert. I've grown, grown up in and around the desert and experienced a lot of positive stuff here in the desert. Um, but even though I don't deer hunt anymore, I, I still like to come out into the desert. You know, sometimes I come out here, I don't even have a camera. I'm just out here keeping up on my technical tricks on tracking wildlife. And, uh, as you, you, you may not be able to see to the untrained eye, but like I said, I've been in the desert so much. You can see this is what they call an animal trail. It's very, very tiny. You can see one trail goes off there and goes that way, and another trail goes off and goes that way. These are small rodent trails. I can see it go all the way over there. I don't know if you guys are going to see it, be able to pick up in the camera. And I can see one going off over in this direction. And these are good places. This is a, a, a perfect example of setting up a, a snare trap in between these two bushes. There's a trail. And you can put a snare trap right there to catch the small rodents, the rabbits, and stuff like that if you're trying to survive in the desert. And the reason I'm showing you this today is because I get a lot of questions of people asking me how long I've been in the desert, could I survive in the desert, do I know what to do in the desert? And the answer to all those is yes. Here's another trail going that way. Now, there are a lot of rumors about uh, barrel cactuses. This is a very tall barrel cactus. Um, typically, you know, usually you find them like this in the desert right here. This size right here. And they do have water in them. And a lot of people say you can cut them open, you can drink the water, which is true. But if you're in a desperate situation, as you can see, this is an area where some little animal dug this out right here. You can see the tracks and the scratch marks and dug himself out a little bed there. Uh, probably a rabbit. Rabbits like to do that. Um, all different types of toya cactuses here in the desert. These are Palo Verde trees. Um, but back to this barrel cactus, you can uh, cut that open and get uh, water out from the inside of them. But only in extreme emergencies because what will happen is it will give you an upset stomach and give you a bad case of the Hershey squirts what I like to call diarrhea there's a lot of beautiful things in the desert like this ironwood tree ironwood tree if you can find in the desert if you're stuck in the desert for some reason and you don't have a knife on you to protect yourself, finding a big piece of ironwood tree, a, a broken arm or limb like this one right here, this is already dead. You could break this off, use it as a walking stick, use it as a, a, a weapon to protect yourself against any wildlife that's out here. A lot of people ask me, do I ever see a wildlife, dangerous wildlife? All wildlife in the desert is dangerous. If you corner it or make it feel trapped, of course it's going to want to protect itself. But the wildlife in the desert, they're not out here to try to sit and ambush you while you're out here on hikes. They're more scared of you than you are of them. I guarantee if you see wildlife, they're going to see you before you ever see them and they're going to run away from you. Now, as I can see here, this is a cat track right here. It's a small cat footprint. How do I know that? Because I have cats. I've had a lot of cats in my lifetime. I know what a cat footprint is. That's like a bobcat. 
is going off in this direction here. Now, deer prints and javelina prints are very, very similar, so it's kind of hard to track them. The only difference when you're tracking a deer and javelina is javelinas run in packs. Deer, although they are in packs, they tend to walk separately. I don't know why they do that, to hide their numbers or something, I have no idea. But uh, here's another dig out. This is, a, this is a rabbit. A rabbit did this because it's so small. And there's a lot of jackrabbits, especially jackrabbits like to sit right in the, in the sunlight. As you can see, the sun is coming in between these trees. So they like to dig here and stretch out, get the coolness of the ground underneath, cool their bellies, and at the same time get sun. Now, if you're stuck in the desert and you need some kind of moisture in your mouth, you can break off a piece of this Palo Verde tree, and it's going to be really bitter, but it will, in times of need, give you some moisture in your mouth. Look at that dove. Sitting right there, wait till the last minute to fly away. Let's go walk here a little bit more. So you got that saguaro. Now, I've told this story many times before. When I was about 11 years old, I got uh, four brothers and three sisters. My mom took me and my brothers out in the middle of freaking nowhere. You know, I'm, I'm almost 54, so this was a long time ago. There was, there's not very many housing or subdivisions around as, as back then as there is now. And she dropped us off in the middle of the desert and said, uh, find your guys' way home. Take care of each other. But she has been giving us trainings our whole life. She's always been taking us out in the desert because back then there was no cable TV, there was no internet, no Game Boy, no PlayStation. We didn't even have a telephone. So we weren't allowed to watch TV as kids. So she would take us out in the desert because my mom is from Mexico. She was born in Mexico City. She has a family of 13, nine brothers, and uh, what, three sisters? And herself was 13 kids. And uh, she was the youngest. So where she grew up, she grew up in the middle of the desert in Mexico, and they didn't have any. Circle K's or Walmarts back then. So what they did for them to survive, they would have to go out into the desert and catch their food. So what she learned when she was a kid from her brothers and stuff was how to survive off the land. And uh, prickly pear cactuses like this, you can eat depending on what time of the year. They will put a fruit up here that's very very sweet, and the birds and the prairie dogs they all love to eat them. And you can eat them also. You can also eat the pad. But you have to be very, very careful. Not with just these, but underneath there, there's very, very, very tiny, fine, fine, fine thorns. And you have to be very, very careful. Now, I will warn you, this is bitter. But there's a lot of moisture in there. If you're stuck in the desert and you're trying to survive, the main thing about surviving is you want to get as much water and moisture into your system so you don't dehydrate. Especially in the desert. It's very, very hot. And this is not only a, a source of food, but this is a, a source where you can catch other types of food. Like rabbits like to hide in the shade of these cactuses. The snakes or predators, ambush predators, like to curl up and hide right there. Mostly that's where you will find a snake. R very rarely you will find a snake in the middle of the afternoon coming out here because the birds are looking out for the snakes too and the birds will not come down into the cactus to get the snake they will wait till the snake comes out and is vulnerable out in the open another beautiful ironwood tree I don't know what happened here man it's like an explosion saguaro cactus you have to be very careful when you come up to the saguaro cactus um, because the snakes like to lay also here. You always want to kick it and make sure there's nothing. That's why if you ever see me in videos, I walk up this, I kick that. I want to make sure there's nothing there so I can step over it. Not have to worry about getting bit by anything. 
Uh, another thing that you can eat in the desert, which uh, people are going to like, ooh, that's gross, uh, are scorpions. You can eat scorpions, you can eat spiders. I've never eaten spiders, but I have eaten scorpions. Uh, when me and my brothers were out trying to survive in the desert, um, what you have to do with scorpions is, I don't see any big rocks around here, but what you do is you, they like to hide under rocks. You just pick up rocks and look, and they'll scurry out, and then you can catch them. Once you cut off the tail and the clippers, uh, the pinchers, they're pretty much safe to eat. They're going to taste kind of like a... Um, a peanut. I don't know, you probably thought I was going to say chicken, but no, not chicken. They taste kind of like a peanut. Snake tastes like chicken. You catch a rattlesnake or a rat snake, uh, they taste like chicken. If you ever see a king snake in the desert, don't ever kill a king snake. I don't care how hungry you are, because those are very nice snakes. That's the reason why they call king snakes, because they go around and they kill the, uh, the poisonous snakes. Now here to the untrained eye, I can see another animal trail right here. It goes, wraps around and goes that way. That can be a prairie dog, it could be a rabbit. They all, smaller animals use the same trails. They share the trails. All right here's a, another small animal digging here. But, uh, I always like to do my hiking in the in the evening and tried to sleep during the day when I was doing survival because in the evening especially in the desert is when all the predators come out and during the day you don't have to worry about spiders coming or scorpions because it's one it's too hot the weather's too hot two the birds sitting up there are also trying to survive in the desert and they're looking out for these little Critters running across the ground so they can swoop down and pick them up and eat them also. Um, that way, and plus, you get your sleep. You don't waste as much energy when you're traveling from one point to another point. Uh, but it sucks because it's even more dangerous traveling at night because all the predators are out. The javelinas, the coyotes, the cougars, the snakes. Because they're all coming out in the cover of darkness. Now what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find uh, some deer tracks because I've been seeing deer droppings everywhere. There goes another animal trail right there. And it's good to learn to spot these animal trails, especially if you're trying to survive in the desert, because these rodents and rabbits and stuff like that, they're all predictable. They will always follow the same trail no matter what. This is another track trap right here in between these two bushes because the trail goes right here, you can set up a snare. You can see an animal has been dug out there and slept there. But uh, I'm trying to find the uh, what I'm looking for to show you what else that you can eat in the desert. And uh, all this stuff, if you're listening about eating, you might be thinking, oh, that sounds gross and I would never do that. Yeah, right, because you're sitting at the comfort of your own home. Of course you wouldn't eat it. This is all based on survival. You would never eat this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. This is only for survival reasons only. And uh, once my brothers and I were able to get back to our house and we lived off the land, I got more and more interested in, into surviving in the desert. There's another sleeping area there. So as I got older, when I got about 21, I uh, took a seven-day survival course. When you're out in the desert, you got to think like the animals. Animals are pretty much the same as people. They want to take the less stressful path as possible. Now, when you see these small trails that are in, like I've been showing you previously, those are small rodents, and they don't travel very far. So they stick in the crowded area of the desert, something that they're used to, something they're comfortable with. The bigger wildlife, the bobcats, the cougars, the deer, the javelina, coyotes, they like to travel in what we call a wash. You may call a river, or the technical term for this is called an arroyo. Uh, as you can see, this is just covered with all kinds of wildlife tracks here. I can see dog prints, cat prints, uh, 
couple that could either be deer or javelina and they're all going that way so let's follow this for a little bit because this is the easiest way this is like the expressway for a wildlife in the desert because they don't have to worry about getting stuck with cactus you know the animals are very smart you know there's a trail that goes off that way you know and the predators know this too they know that the other animals that they prey on will take the least stressful pass to take now I pointed to a trail going off that way and the reason is because this is blocked they, the animals know that there's a block there so they created a trail right over here and once you learn that yeah they, see here's the trail right here it goes off runs alongside of the the wash it co goes around and goes right back into the wash again so that tells me this is a heavily traveled trail it, the animals knew, I didn't know, I should have took that trail, the animals knew that there was a blockage here so they created a trail going around and came back here. Now, I knew, you know, I knew that, but, you know, maybe your first time in the desert you didn't know that. You don't, you don't, you're not, your eyes are not trained to see what the animals see already. Once again, there's a trail that goes off there, it goes around that way because there's a block right here. So I'll follow that. I still haven't seen what I'm trying to show you. Let me show you another trick to surviving in the desert before I go on that trail. Alright, this rock will do. This ain't the perfect rock, but this will give you a visual of what I'm talking about. Let me see. Here's another thing. People ask me if I ever get scared while I'm out in the desert. No, I don't get scared because, especially, they're like, aren't you scared of running into a cougar or something? No, I'm not, because cats are basically the same as your house cat. <clears throat> I don't know how many times my cat Cleo in the house, I will walk by. She blends in so well that I don't even see her sleeping on the floor in the corner or on the edge of the... Because she won't even move. They're predator animals. They will only give up their location when they're ready to strike. And I'm not on their food list. I'm the enemy to them. This trail goes all the way around. So they're not going to give up their hiding spot. I could walk by, there could be a cougar sitting right there. They blend in so well that I would never know it. Unless I got too close. Unless I interrupted their comfort, comfort zone or got into their space. They're not going to jump out and show me. Now, javelinas are different. Javelinas, as soon as they hear you coming, they're going to take off. You, you might hear them. But uh, you can see the trail goes right back over there. You might hear them. And you can see them in the distance, but you're never going to walk up on a javelina unless you're like going down into um, a bridge or something and they're in those little culverts and they feel like they're trapped. Then they will come after you. Only because, not because they're trying to eat you, it's because they're trying to get through you to get away from you. Coyotes, coyotes will run away as fast as they can. They don't want any interaction with humans at all. It's not until you corner these animals. Uh, oh yeah, this rock, I forgot. Another way to get through the desert if you have no water is to get a rock, a more smoother rock, but something this size, kind of like a river rock where they're very, very smooth. They are kind of hard to find. That's why back in the day, so this is a coyote check right here. There's a dog print, clear dog print right there. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but it's going that way. The smoother the rock, the river rock, the better. Now this is a sleeping area for a larger animal right here. This right here, this area right here. You can see the big huge digouts. Two of them where they sit. Now this could be a coyote lair. Because it's a perfect shade, it's a perfect cover, it's near the expressway for the animals. There isn't any here right now. And it smells like urine around here. So they're marking their territory. But uh, if you put this small river rock in your mouth under your tongue and because it's a foreign object in your mouth, your mouth will create saliva, keep your mouth moist, keep you from getting dry mouth. Once you find a smooth river rock, the Indians, they always carry that rock with them everywhere they go to, to allow them to get from one water point to the next water point. 
you know, it's not a, it's not a bottle of water, but back in the ancient times, that's how they survived in the desert, sucking on rocks. It's a fact. You can Google it. I'm not making this stuff up. Just Google it. Anyways, here's another blockage right here. And, and there's like a quail there. Quail is another bird that you can eat. So the trail goes off that way. Let's go that way. Dove. There's a lot of dove and a lot of quail uh, to eat. Very easy to catch. The trail goes that way and the trail goes that way. Very, very tasty too. They actually taste better than chicken. But the problem with eating quail is they're such a beautiful bird. Right? To kill such a beautiful animal. But when you're in survival mode, it doesn't matter. I'm going to walk around here a little bit, explore this area, and see what I can find. I'll be back. Alright, so uh, while I was exploring this area, I've been seeing a lot of deer scat here and there. And uh, rabbit scat. You have to be careful because deer scat and rabbits, rabbit scat look very similar. And as I was coming in this area exploring, uh, I heard a bunch of noises and I looked right over there and sure enough, I saw a deer taking off running that way, but I didn't have my camera turned on. I wasn't able to catch it, but I am seeing deer tracks everywhere in this area. And this, and the reason why is because this is the perfect spot. We have the river running right there, the Animal Expressway, and then we have, as you can see behind me, a nice area where a large animal could lay under and get shade. Same with right over in here. There's another uh, wash there and another huge tree right over here. <clears throat> now, what's, what, what's going to happen is when you're surviving in the desert, even though you might be sitting in your couch watching this video and thinking, I would never eat any of that stuff. There's a lot of stuff in the desert that you can eat, but I wouldn't advise eating it on a daily basis, but there are people that do come out into the desert and they um, come out here to collect this stuff to eat on a regular basis. They catch the scorpions, they get the fruit from the prickly bear cactuses, you know, they get the patch from the uh, cactuses. And what it's called is called the uh, macro, macrobiotic diet. You can Google that. I don't know how to spell it. I just know how to say it. Macrobiotic diet. And uh, <clears throat> what that diet consists of is, you know, eating greens and uh, organic stuff. And uh, what it actually is, is it's like a Buddhist Zen type of diet to where you're trying to get your mind, body, and spirit back with, in one with nature. And they believe, people that are on this diet believe that eating this kind of stuff, not only people who are in the survival, but the people that are on this macrobiotic diet uh, believe they can eat it. Now, I haven't done any survival stuff in a long time. But I have, like I said, I experienced it when I was a kid. And I did it again. I took a seven-day course where uh, all you get is a knife, a compass, and a canteen of water and a radio. In case you need help or get hurt, you can call for help. I think uh, if you have kids that are interested in it, maybe you want to enroll them in some kind of uh, Boy Scout stuff. But uh, I don't know anything really about Boy Scouts, but I do have someone I know. His name is Dave. He's a Boy Scout. And he has a YouTube channel. You can go check it out. I'll put a link down in the description below. But it's called Hilly Cool 1104. He's a Boy Scout. He lives up in Washington State. And uh, he knows a lot of stuff about, you know, camping and Boy Scout stuff. And if you have any type of survival questions or you're interested in, you have some kids that might be interested in survival. Because what I'm talking about today is extreme survival. That's what I'm interested in. But before you can get into something like extreme survival, like I've had experience my whole life, you, you want to start off your kids off in Boy Scout. Let, let them learn the basics. What, I, what I'm talking about is from my experiences and for me surviving in the desert. I'm tracking this deer tracks right now. And deers are, deer are 
a lot like birds. Every time they go to take off, they poop, or what we call scat. Now, deer scat and rabbit scat look very, very similar. Rabbit scat is not, you don't want to eat it, right? But deer scat, you can eat. Now, what you're thinking in your mind right now, oh my God, he's talking about eating deer poop. You can't look at it like deer poop. You have to look at it like, uh, like it's some kind of herbal supplement. You're probably laughing, but when you've gone 10 days without eating, you'll pretty much eat anything. And, uh, oh, there's some scat right there. And that looks like fresh. I bet that's from the deer that I saw running in this direction. They're fast, man. If you walk around with your camera on all the time, your battery will die. And as soon as your battery dies, then you'll see the wildlife. But check this out. This is called, I think this is the Christmas Choya Cactus here is what this is called. Anyways, when you're in survival mode, you'll eat anything to survive. You're probably thinking, no, I wouldn't. I would not eat deer scat. But if you have a mindset of surviving, you have to think of deer scat as a supplement. you got to think of the vitamins and minerals that are in it. Because they're a vegetarian animal. They're not eating meat. They're eating the Palo Verde leaves. They're eating the ironwood leaves. The Palo Verde bark, which has moisture in it. And that's where they get their, their moisture to survive in the desert. Because it's not... This is a desert for a reason. There is not a lot of areas for wildlife to get animals. So what they do is they get it out of the plant life that are here. You got vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin K, vitamin C, B6, magnesium, copper, calcium, potassium. This is all the stuff that are in the foods that these animals are eating. And that's what you need because if you're starving from food and fluids in the desert, you have to think on a survival basis. You have to think, yeah, this looks disgusting. I would never do this, and you wouldn't. But when you're in survival mode, and anything counts, you're going to eat it. Now, this scatter that I found right here looks extremely fresh, and I guarantee this is from that deer that I saw right there. That is deer scat. Now, rabbit scat is smaller and more rounder. And as you can see, as it's glistening in the sun, that is fresh. That is not old. And if you have to eat it, you want to get as fresh as you can before you eat it. Let, let me get in closer here. All right, now the first thing you want to do to distinguish deer scat from uh, rabbit scat is know the, the shape of the scat that you're looking at. That is definitely fresh, I can tell, just by how moisture it looks. And there's a couple ways you can tell. One, by the size, the shape. Rabbits, rabbit scat is much smaller. Kind of, oh yeah, see how much, how moist that is? Uh, rabbit scat is much smaller. And this is deer scat. Uh, let me get closer. Another way you can tell is by smell. By getting in smelling it. <laughs> Yep, yep, pretty sure that's deer scat. And the other way is to actually taste it. Now if it's bitter, the reason it's bitter, and I'm pretty sure you can uh, ask Dave at the uh, Healy Cool 1104, uh, what happens when you have bitter scat is because the animal is under stress. Now for me, I'm going to have to test this. Just to show you that, you know, I, I don't just practice what I preach, but I, I walk to walk and I talk to talk. So let me get a couple of these here and just show you that this is possible to to eat. Now, if you get easily disgusted, turn away, but... It doesn't taste like poop. Yeah, that's definitely not rabbit scat. Nah, yeah, definitely not rabbit scat. It's very, very moist. You'd be amazed just how much moisture is in in this. But just to show you that you don't want to get the ones with the rocks in them. Make sure there's no rocks or gravel. Even though they will help you with grindage, but 
my mouth is already getting moist already as it is. And the funny thing is this, you, you're thinking, oh my god, that's deer poop, deer scat. There is, there is no smell. Really, there is no smell because basically what's in here is tree bark, tree leaves, maybe some cactus fruit. Hold on, Matt. I'm getting a little hint of mesquite wood. Yeah, it tastes like mesquite wood. If you eat a lot of mesquite barbecue, yeah. Uh, Actually, really, it's not bad because it's so fresh. It's a fresh pile of scat, and I was fortunate enough to. That's a good thing, though. When you're out in the desert trying to survive, and you see a deer take off, like I said, they're a lot like birds. They'll poop before they run. It's like dropping extra cargo or something. And that is actually the best time to actually eat the scat. I'm going to leave that for the rabbits because rabbits will eat that also. Coyotes will come along and smell the, the deer scat and also eat the deer scat but uh, I'm going to bring in wet wipes for me so uh, it does have an aftertaste that is for sure now because I've been trained in survival I would not recommend anybody trying this at home you know this is a try at your own risk I'm not responsible I'm just teaching you the basics of that one that one was that was a little bitter, that one. <laughs> Must be because I stressed him when I snuck up on him. Anyways, yeah, I'm just going to leave that scat for the animals there. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, this is just a how-to basic knowledge of surviving in the desert. You know, I didn't have to eat that, but I wanted to prove to you that I could eat it. That even though I'm not in survival mode... I've experienced this type of survival before, so actually that thing is extremely moist. And I got a strong mesquite taste in my mouth. I wish I had some water to wash that out, but the only reason I'm thinking like that is because I'm not in survival mode. I'm just trying to show you how to survive in the desert. But like I said, don't just go out and do this yourself. You know, especially if you've never done it before. I'm highly trained in survival in the desert. Even though I'm wearing a bat mask and you might not believe that. Look at this choy cactus that has been turned completely upside down. How the heck did that happen? Alright. Look at it. It's like a Sasquatch would do something like this. You know how heavy this sucker is? This thing's got to be 60, 70 pounds. Anyways, I'm going to go right back down this Animal Expressway. Start heading back to my car. Because I have a bottle of water there. And uh, I need to get this taste out of my mouth. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to work my way back to the normal trail. But uh, pretty much that's it. That's some... Uh, techniques that you can try only if you're trained I wouldn't highly I wouldn't recommend it because it's kind of funky tasting but only in survival mode should you do ever attempt to do something like that but uh, yeah just wanted to show you guys what it was like to see somebody actually doing chick now this is a prickly pear cactus I showed this on a previous video That's what a prickly pear cactus looks like when it's completely decomposing. And this is another special place where animals would love to make a home. I can see, I can see there's rat scat in there, which is similar to uh, deer and rabbit scat, but it's much more smaller, much more compressed. You don't want to eat that scat. That's bad because the rodents eat, the rodents will go eat that scat that's in the desert. But they eat some other disgusting stuff, and they're rats, and you definitely don't want to eat that unless you're absolutely starving. Well, this is for extreme cases only. This is not like some people, like I said, like to come out and collect that scat and get on that macrobiotic diet. 
because like I said they want to be in tune being one with nature so anyways I'm gonna work my way back to my car get my water wash on my mouth and uh, I'll be back in a little bit this is what they call a crown saguaro look at that usually most of the time they're usually at the very very top of the saguaro but this one's about I don't know about six foot high off the ground look at mutation I don't know what causes the swirl to do that but this is a tall this is about 30 foot tall swirl mutation they call this crowning To watch where I'm walking on and step backwards into a choya cactus. But oh, there's a huge chunk taken out of this swirl too where you can actually oh the sunlight is blinding me. See the ribs. Inside this swirl there. huge it's rare to see these out in the desert this mutation all right we're all right so I'm almost back to my car this is a huge swirl here so before I end this video I just want to say one thing Everything that I said in this video, I hope it helps somebody out to survive in the desert. <clears throat> what you see right here, that is rabbit scat. Right there. Smaller, more rounder. But, I want to let everybody know that that deer scat that I ate, that really wasn't deer scat. I just playing around. It's a joke, people. It is a joke. It was raisinets. Did it for science. It's a joke. Don't take everything so seriously. Learn to laugh. Right? Because I know I'm going to get a bunch of freaking emails and comments and people, you know, saying that that's disgusting and all this. It is. Eating any kind of animal feces is disgusting. And I don't recommend doing it. Everything up until eat, me eating this cat is true. All the other stuff you can't eat if you're in a survival situation but that stuff definitely wasn't really deer scat it's just milk chocolate raisin eggs no I'm not sponsored by raisin eggs and, and these are all melting in the box I'm gonna throw this away anyways but uh, just to add some humor in my videos if you've been watching me long enough you know I like to put humor in my videos just another joke lighten up people anyways if you like these kind of videos of information of stuff in the desert you know what the trees are called what the cactus is called you know what it looks like what it feels like leave me a comment down below let me know what you think hit me a thumbs up and a likes and like always thank you for taking your time to watch my videos I'm gone. Just do